Hi, welcome to this course. My name's Craig. I'll be your tutor and I'll be guiding you through all the basics of Ableton Live Lite. So I've been using and teaching Ableton Live every day for pretty much the last 10 years. So in this course, I will teach you everything I think you need to know to get up and running and making music in Ableton Live in next to no time. As you go through this course, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'll be more than happy to help. Okay, so let's get to it. See you in class. Let's first discuss the features of Ableton Live Lite. So if we scroll down here, the key features remain predominantly the same as the, all the versions of Ableton Live. And also it stacks up against any other professional DAW in terms of that it can do multi-track recording up to 32-bit, 192 kilohertz sample rate, which basically means it can record audio, playback audio to a very high standard, okay? You have all the features that you would find and associate with Ableton Live. You can include your third-party plugins, so it's any extra audio effects or instruments you download. Now, where the limitation is, we can only have two center return tracks, 16 scenes, eight mono inputs, and eight mono outputs, eight audio and MIDI tracks. Okay, so that's where we're gonna find the limitations and we'll have a look at trying to get to these limitations and see if it's a problem for us, okay? The other limitations is the amount of included software instruments. We only have one, two, three, four. Audio effects, on the other hand, we have quite a few. If you scroll down here, you see there's quite a few going on here, which we will go into what they will do later in this course. And we have MIDI effects as well. Again, we have quite a few. Then this here also shows all the amount of extras you get. So how many racks? Well, racks are basically like presets. Um, then how many MIDI clips? So you get some preset MIDI clips. Also, you get some presets as well of the individual instruments and audio effects, templates, and then you get some samples included as well. So that's all the features of Ableton Live Lite. Okay, so let's get Ableton Live Lite installed. So if we go here to get Ableton Live Lite, first thing you need to do is scroll down and find out that it will actually work on your computer. So you need to see if these specs match up with what you have for your computer. So what's really cool about Ableton Live is that it's Mac and PC compatible. Just check you have all these specs on your Mac or PC. Okay, if that's all good, let's download it. So the installation process for Ableton Live Lite is slightly different to Ableton Live Intro. Intro is pretty much straightforward. You go to the shop here and you go buy now and you would download intro. It would ask you to create an account. You would then download it, press a button in Ableton Live that says authorized and it's authorized. It's a bit harder with light. And let me go through the process and I'll refer back to how easy it is with intro in a second. So we go get started, we click download. Once it's download, run through the installation process, then go to your applications and we're just gonna double click, open up Ableton Live. We're gonna go authorize with ableton.com. Now, if you were installing intro, this is all you would need to do. You would click there, it would open up your account, you go open suite and it would go, it's installed. As long as you're still signed in on your browser to your account where you purchased intro. Now, if you see here, it says licenses do not match so remember, Ableton Live Lite has to be purchased with a controller. So it's not completely free, although it looks like it's free there. You have to have a license. So I've brought a Launchpad by Novation. I've signed into my account on their website, and then I go to my software, and it shows all the software that comes with my product. So you need to just double check before you purchase a product that it comes with Ableton Live Lite. So I go view details, and here's my serial. So I'm gonna go copy that. Now I'm gonna go back to Ableton Live's website. You will need to create an account with Ableton, but it is free. Then once you've done that, if you see up here, I have my licenses. Click down, it says register a new product. So now I'm gonna do is paste the code for Ableton Live Lite, press submit. Then we're gonna do the same thing we did before, authorize with Ableton. It says Ableton Live Lite, authorize, click authorize. Open Ableton Live Suite, and it's successfully been authorized. Now, if you don't do that process, it will come up with an orange bar down here saying you cannot save and export. So it's really important that you do this step. Now, depending on when you downloaded, you might need to do an update and I'm just gonna update that now and then we'll get started. See you in the next video. So this is the main window of Ableton Live Lite. 
So let's go through and figure out what all of this does. So it can be broken down into one, two, three, four main sections, okay? So we have our transport controls, our browser, a detailed view, and our main music creation area. So let's start with the transport controls. So I'm not gonna go over all of them, I'll just go over the ones you need to get up and running. So first one is the tempo up here. So this sets the speed at which you listen and record your music. You can adjust it by simply clicking up and scrolling up or scrolling down. You can double click and type in a value. To be able to hear the pulse of the song, you can use this thing here, which is the metronome. So if I press spacebar now to engage the playback, you can hear the metronome sound. I can slow it down, speed it up. Double click to get back to the preset of 120. Now, if you click on this little drop down arrow here, we have options. So we can have a counting. So that give you a certain amount of bars before it starts recording. That's always quite good. And then you have some rhythm options here and enable whilst only recording. Let's turn that off for now. Next thing are the main transport controls. So we have play, which plays back any audio or MIDI information we would have engaged or in a range view. We have stop, which stops. And if you double click, it takes it back to the start. Here we can see where we are at bars, beats, and then 16th notes. So if I press play here, one, two, three, four, you can see it's going through. This enables us to record. Now we'll come on to this in a minute because this record works slightly different to a traditional record in a normal DAW. And this one here also records. So we have two records. This record basically deals with the other view, which is a range view. And this record deals with this view, which is called session view. So this is called our transport record and this is called our session record. If we go over here, there's a couple more features over here that we should be aware of, which is this little feature here, which is our pencil tool, which we can press B to engage that on and off. And that enables us to draw in MIDI notes, which we will do later in this course. Next is the keyboard here, which enables our QWERTY keyboard to turn into a MIDI controller. So be careful to turn this on when only when you need it, because some shortcuts become redundant if you have this engaged. So if you ever press a shortcut that I say, and it doesn't work, check that this little dude up here isn't engaged. Then key mapping, we'll come onto that later, but this is where we can essentially map anything to our QWERTY keyboard. So if I wanted to stop button here to number one, I would just press number one, press that. And then if I press one, you see it flashes. Next is MIDI which is exactly the same, but for an external MIDI controller. It keeps you updated on your performance of Ableton Live, so it shows you the percentage of CPU you're using. So at the moment I'm on two, okay? So you can have a warn when current CPU overload, and then also it tells you when your audio engine is on, which we will come on to how to set your audio engine up in a minute. So that's all the features you need to know about for now. Next one is the browser. So if this isn't already open, it's this little drop down tab. So you have a categories with all the different things you need and use within Ableton Live Lite. Then we have places, which is just a link to places of files and samples that are stored on your hard drive. So we come down here, we have another little menu which is tucked away and this is something called the groove pool where we can add swing and grooves to our already existing MIDI clips. Don't worry if any of this terminology doesn't make sense just yet, you're in the right place because as we go through this course, it will all make sense. Hope you're enjoying this video. Firstly, if you've gotten to this point, I'd like to thank you for watching this far. Secondly, I'd like to ask you to hit the thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. It really does help us out here. More importantly, for the sort of person that's watched this far, it means you generally care about learning Ableton Live. Why not consider subscribing to the channel, turning on all those notifications because we have loads more useful videos just like this one coming real soon. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Let's get back to the video. We have another little hidden drop down menu here, which is our help or our inf info view. So if I keep that open, if I hold my mouse over anything, it tells me what it does. So this is quite good to have open whilst you're learning Ableton Live. Light. Next is our detail view. So this will either show our instruments we have on our MIDI track. So if I click at the top of a MIDI track here, it will show an instrument. If I click at the top of an audio track, it would show audio tracks. If I clicked on either a MIDI clip or an audio clip, it would show me what is inside. Now you can hide that here with this little kind of drop down menu here. And that brings us onto the main elephant in the room, which is this view, which most people open up Ableton Live and go, hell no, this is just doesn't look like any other DAW. What is this all about? So this is something called session view. So let me dissect it into three manageable chunks, which is first we have to understand what the tracks are, the clips are, and the scenes are and then we'll get playing with it and see how it all works. So first off is we have tracks. Now the tracks are vertical columns that contain clips. Now the clips can either be a region of 
MIDI or a region of audio. Clips are the building block of live. They are pieces of musical information or MIDI information that when played or launched will loop continuously until we tell them to either stop or play another clip. Now we can stop them by pressing, as I said before, the stop button. If I put a clip underneath, it will cancel the clip out. If I put a clip next to it, it will play on top. I will demonstrate this in a second. Last thing we need to get used to is this thing here called the scene. So scenes are used to launch every clip in a row simultaneously. So we click on the associated scene launch button, which is this play button here, and that would play all the clips in that line. This is very good for organizing our clips into different sections of a song. So on the tracks, we have a few more controls here. We can control where we receive audio from, External in means audio from outside the computer, which we will come on to in the recording audio. Monitor is then how you hear that audio coming in in real time. Do you hear it directly from the sound card or do you hear it being processed through Ableton Live? Then we have sends, which is where we can route the audio to one of these send and return tracks. And we have a volume, which we can adjust the amplitude of the audio or MIDI. To get it back to zero, just double click. We have a pan, which adjusts the audio or MIDI within the stereo image. We have a mute, which silences the track. Then we have a solo, which will just play that one track that is soloed and mute the rest. We also then have a record engage, which once that's turned on, that enables us to record loops within our track. Let's check our audio preferences to make sure that we can hear audio coming out of Ableton Live. We do this by pressing command comma on a Mac or control comma on Windows. You can also go up to the shortcut here. It says settings. I believe on Windows it's in options somewhere. Then we're going to choose the audio tab down here and we're going to look at this area here, the audio input and output device. This essentially deals with how we hear audio going in. So when we come to record, how we will get the audio into Ableton Live for it to capture it and how we hear it out. And that's the main thing we want to do today. So depending on how you've got your computer set up, are you listening just on your laptop speakers? Do you have your headphones plugged in or do you have an audio interface? If you don't know what audio interface is, it's simply a box that you plug into your computer that allows you to convert audio into Ableton Live to be recorded and captured. Once you've plugged that in, you will then need to plug your headphones into the audio interface, not the computer. We'll come on to more about that in the recording audio section, but just if you've got that in, remember that's how you would, where you would plug your headphones in or plug your speakers in. At the moment I'm using some streaming software, so that's where I'm hearing the audio. So this drop down menu here basically dictates where the audio is going to come out from. So if you're listening on your audio interface, you would choose your audio interface. If you're listening on your speakers, you would choose your speakers. Or if you've got Bluetooth headphones, you would choose your Bluetooth headphones. We don't need to worry about the rest of the settings just yet. We will come onto that into the audio recording. So now we should be able to hear something. So if I click on one of these, we can hear it. You could do this by pressing command comma, which opens up the preferences or on windows is control comma. You can also find it up here in the live tab. You go to settings or in windows, it's in options and down here somewhere. Once you're in the settings, go down to the plugins tab Make sure your use audio units version two is turned on, audio units turned on, and then use VST system plugins folders. So when you install your VSTs from developers, they will in automatically install into the system folders. If you've had to manually install things on your computer, you might have custom folders. So you can choose your destination here by going browse and finding where your plugins are stored. And you can turn that on as well if you want. I don't have any VST2s in any custom folders, so I'm just gonna keep it in my system folders. Hey, hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to dive deeper into the world of Ableton Live, why not check out my full Ableton Live course? We'll not only cover all the awesome things Ableton Live can do, we'll look at writing and producing a track from scratch, then we'll look at how we record vocals, then mix it and master it, ready for release. So if that's the sort of thing you're interested in, click the links below. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let's get back to the video. Then same, for, same options for VST3, so I'm going to choose the system folders. And exactly the same thing down here, you can choose the destination if you have any custom folders. Then here, the plugin windows, this is this is like an additional option. I would highly suggest turn it on, having multiple plugin windows on. Then you've got auto hide plugins in Windows, turn that off. 
and auto open plugin windows turn that off so basically what happens then is if i select a track it will automatically open all the plugins and then you've got auto open plugins so this basically means if i'm not on the track it will hide the plugins and if i'm on the track it will automatically open up all the plugins not a big fan of that so i just turn it off it's just it's good to be aware of it so to close that down we've done everything we can in ableton live now so what we need to do is go over here and go to our plugins tab and that will show all the plugins you have available on your computer.